everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's an honor. It's a privilege to stand before you even now in the land of the yet in the land of the living. Amen. Thank God for life, health, and strength. Thank God for another day's journey. If I would sing a song, it would be, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad. So glad to be here. He woke me up this morning. I'm glad. He started me on my way. I'm glad. He gave me the activities of my limbs. I'm glad. Amen. Somebody ought to be glad out there. Be thankful. Be happy. Be thankful to God for another opportunity, another chance, another moment to even just to enjoy life as it is. Why? Because we know God is with us. I want to say welcome to the New Life Experience Church Bible Study Tuesday night. Tuesday night, the last Tuesday of the month. And uh, if you would do me a favor, tell someone, tell someone, hey, Bible study, get your Bibles out, get your phones out, take a few moments. Hey, let's, 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 let's block out some time for God's word. Amen. We go all week, and uh, you, you, you won't have a good appetite. You got a good appetite, uh, but if you don't go, if you go all week without eating, you won't survive. So tonight, we want to survive. We're going to survive. So we're going to ask you all to come on, and, and let's break bread together. I'm honored and privileged to be here before you. Yes, I want to uh, encourage you all uh, to come on out. Come on out to our services. Uh, tune in on Tuesday night uh, for our Bible study. Share it with somebody. Just tag somebody. Let them know, hey, listen, Pastor John is on the air coming to try to give us a word of encouragement, a word of thought that we can en help encourage one another. I am, we are our brother's keeper, and uh, that's our assignment, amen, to help us, help one another to get through this journey that we call life. Amen. Life. And before we get started, I want to uh, let you know we're praying for you, praying for those that are sick, shut in, praying for those that are in convalescent homes, and even those that are maybe sitting behind bars. I often say, I love to say it, you may be bound physically, but you don't have to be bound spiritually. Amen. And whom the Son has set free, you are free indeed. Wherever you are, God has set you free. You ought to thank God for your freedom. <laughs> you thank God for your freedom. Amen. So we want to pray for those and pray for our young people. Pray for those that are in bereavement. There's so much that's going on. Pray for families that's losing loved ones and have lost loved ones. Uh, for whatever reason it is, we want to pray that God will help and comfort and undergird you. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, in the Jesus' name, we thank you for your, good, your goodness, your kind favor to us, God. We honor your presence. We thank you, Lord God, for another day that we've never seen before. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand before you and be stand before your people. God, we ask you right now to bless us tonight. God, help us to hear a word from you. Help us right now, God. We're just a servant. We're just passing on the word. We're just a messenger. Help us right now, God. And before we get into this word, I pray for those that are sick, those that are sick and shut in. Oh, God, I believe. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in the power of healing. God, you're still healing. You're still setting free. Oh, God, you can do anything but fail. Ask you right now to touch those that are under the sound of my voice Maybe even in pain. I ask you right now to take it away. Hallelujah. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off. Take your hands off. You trespassed him in the name of Jesus. We belong to God. I ask you right now to comfort those that are in bereavement. Oh, God, someone has lost a loved one, crying, feeling the void. I ask you right now to comfort them right now. Cast, help them to cast their cares upon you. 
in Jesus' name, those that are in convalescent homes, those that are in, sitting behind bars, let them know they're not by themselves. you right there with them. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, bless us with this word for a few moments as we pray, try to share what you have given to us. Amen. To help us on this life journey. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And uh, certainly before I get started, I want to uh, even thank you all for your support. And we also going to ask you to we 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 going to ask you even to even uh, continue to support uh, the ministry. We can't do these things without your support. We need your financial support, and we appreciate it. Amen. This is all for the kingdom of God. We have a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, you give on 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 by phone, and you can of course. Uh, the, I feel like one of the safest ways, give in person, which is good, and give online, the give a fight, uh, uh, give a fight uh, app or whatever, and uh, we got a lock box, and we got to keep our eyes on it. I don't want to say that too long, too much, because, you know, the enemy try to break in your mailbox. <laughs> but uh, however you get it to us, we'll certainly appreciate it. If not, send it with somebody. No, do better. Bring it yourself. Amen. Bring it yourself. Bring it in. So we appreciate everyone. We appreciate this is God's house and this is the Lord's doing. And uh, we can't do these things without your financial support. Y'all still believe in paying tithes and offerings? Amen. Tithes and offerings. Amen. Show. And I, I really do. I, I'm not going there, but I, 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 God has showed me so many times. He's proven himself over and over and over I don't care what everybody else said and all of that, but listen, when you give as unto the Lord, he will give it back to you. He will bless you. So I'm a, I am a living witness from a child, from the beginning, you know, cutting grass up to now to working on my job. I still believe in giving tithes and offerings to the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Well, tonight I want to get on into the lesson for a few moments. Uh, I want to bring your attention uh, to a topic and, uh, uh, that God has given me, uh, uh, given me. Um, I, I think I'll start off, uh, before I go to David, I, I go, I'm going to start off with Matthew, Matthew the seventh chapter, Matthew the seventh chapter, let's look at that, Matthew seven, y'all get your Bibles, come on y'all, come on saints, come on children, hey, yeah, come on Bible study. Amen. Come on, Bible class is in the house. Amen. Tell someone. Let's, let's see what the Lord has to say to us tonight. Matthew 7. Matthew 7. Let's look at the uh, 21st verse. We'll read maybe three verses that, uh, of what Jesus is saying. He was uh, teaching those. Uh, the, the, the subject matter here was talking about how to build a house, and uh, how to build a house. But listen, that, the point that I want to bring out tonight uh, is, look at that 21st verse. Look at what Jesus said. He said, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Not everyone that saith unto me, read it again, saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Look at this 22nd verse. Many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have we cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works you'll see that question and what did Jesus say he said yeah and then I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me Ye work, ye that work 
iniquity. Look at what Jesus is saying. Then I will let you know. I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you this. I never knew you. Depart from me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Lord. Did not we call on your name? Did not we prophesy? Did not we tell? Did not we come to church? Did not we? Jesus say, I didn't even, I don't, you did those things, but I don't know you. My topic tonight is intimacy with God. <laughs> intimacy with God. That's what I want to talk about. Intimacy with God. In other words, in other words, you came to church, you did the right things, you had, you had pretty good religion. You did some, you even prophesied, you did some works, you try, you even cast out devils, but there's something. I'm going to let you know, I didn't even, I don't even know you. So what's happening? There had to be a breakdown. There was a, a disconnect in the communication. There was, a, there was no intimacy with God. There, there was some arterial motive. In, in other words, in other words, you, you were doing these things, but I, you weren't doing it for me. Got to be careful. You don't have a personal relationship with me. In, in fact, that word intimacy, that word means, listen, how can you have uh, an intimate relationship with anybody or anyone if there's no communication? I was thinking about this text today. It's kind of like uh, I was telling someone, listen, some people only call on God when they need something or when they want something from God. And, and that's just, that's, that's a superficial love or, or desire. Because cause only, only time I come to church, yeah, I come, I come, how many times you come this year? Oh, I, I go on Christmas, I go on Easter, and, and, and I, 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 God, I give him all the glory. But then, then, then he's going to say those things, listen, he said, you did these things, but I don't know you. Look at this. How many of us can just walk up to anybody and say, hey, listen, hey, man, can, can, you, can you give me $1,000? Can you let me borrow your car? Can you, let me, can you let me spend a night at your house? Can you let me do this, that, or the other? And, and if, if it's a stranger, what would be the first thing you say? Listen, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you. Wait a minute. You got some money. You got some money you can give I don't know you. I just don't give to anybody. I just don't uh, 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 give out to, to anybody. I, I, I do it for people that I know, and, and, but, but I don't know you. I can't do that. I'm not going. Isn't that what Jesus is saying? Listen, I don't know you. Wait a minute. I shouted. I came. I ran up and down. Listen, I don't know you. Wow. Something. Tonight. We got to learn how to have an intimate relationship with God. So, so we just don't want to go through the rituals. We just don't want to go uh, uh, just to go and, and, and not, not be able to have a relationship. I tell people often, listen, don't allow anyone to determine how close you are with God. You have to do that. You have to have a relationship with God. You have to have a communication with God. If, if there's no communication, there's no intimacy. You and I or you of us are in relationships with wives or spouse and, and, and girlfriends and boyfriends. If there was no communication, if there is no communication, <laughs> you just don't walk up and start having some relationship without any communication. There's got to be some communication before the intimacy. So what Jesus is saying, listen, you don't, you're doing all these things, but I don't know you. Lord, have mercy. Somebody need to say, Lord, I, I, I got to know you. I want to know you in a special way. How do I do that? How do I continue to, how do I uh, 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 know that I have a, a relationship with God? That's, that's personal. That's like on a, that's every time uh, uh, when you get up in the morning. Let, let's, I'm going to go there. In fact, turn, find Find David, find Psalms, excuse me, Psalms 23, 63. 
I love this passage, and there's so many other passages I can go through, but, but I, I want, how can I do it? How can I do it? For me, I'm going to tell you all, uh, one of the best moments for me to have an uh, intimate relationship with God is in the morning, in the quiet moment. You find your place. It's kind of hard doing, uh, finding some intimate time with God when, when everything is all busy and all that. But listen, look, I want to do like David did. Uh, I'm going to tell you some of the challenges, some of the trying or some questions that I may have, I want to ask God, I want to talk to him as early in the morning, 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Even though my body may be tired, my mind will wake up, my spirit will wake up and say, wait a minute, I got to talk to God. I got to have a relationship with my father. And In other words, I, I have such a, you know how it is when you first meet your, your, your spouse or your loved one, how you always want to talk to them, uh, how you want to you wanna stay on the phone. Uh, you, it doesn't matter. It can be raining outside. You stand on the phone and don't even realize you're wet. Why? Because you have such a desire to talk to that individual. You can stand up. Y'all know how it is. Yes, sitting on the phone just to hear the voice, uh, fall asleep, wake up to hear the voice. You have a, a, a desire to communicate. That's the way we should have that same desire to go after God. The golden text of the Bible is, listen, I already love you. I love you. What is the golden text? John 3.16, we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his the world. You're part of the world. I'm part of the world. That he gave his only begotten son. He gave his son for him, for us. He's already showed us he loved us. So you don't have to wonder if God loved you. You don't have to, you don't have to figure out. He already told us. I love you. I already love you. And it's an unconditional love. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Some of us, we, we got to pick and choose who we love, and, and it probably be a good idea. But Jesus, Jesus said, listen, I, I don't care who you are. I love you. I gave my son for you that whosoever believes, this is what we have to do, believe, trust. That's part of that, that that's part of, that's one of the key words to having an intimacy or, or with someone is to trust him, believe him. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have everlasting life. In other words, God said, you do these things, you do these things, you, you, you believe in me, you believe in me, you give your life to me, you're not going to perish. Woo! I don't care what you're going through. In other words, your, your intimacy with God was going, is going to give you everlasting life. But now until we get to that everlasting life, that intimacy that you have with God is that communication. Hallelujah. Amen. I hope you can get this tonight, having that communication with God. I want you to look at, look at, look at Psalms 20, uh, 63, and I want you to, I, I'm going I'm to step off a little bit, and I want you to look at it in the uh, uh, New Living Translation Bible. Uh, I like the way it says. I like it. But uh, Psalm 63, look at this. Look at this. Look at what David said. Oh, God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. See that? He said, my soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you. And is in this parched and weary land where there is no water. Do you know we're living in a wicked world right now? We living in a weary land. We living, but but listen, we still have to to have that desire. We still have to have that 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 uh, that urge. Some people have lost their desire. Life, they've lost their desire even to get back in church. Now, I was thinking about this too. Also, they've opened the schools back and let the kids back, and and it's a proven fact that the children learn better. When they come back together, it was all right to get by. We got by with the virtue and all of the, the, the hiccups and ups and downs with that. But when the children came back, they were so excited to get back in the class, 
to see their teachers. They were so excited to get back to see their friends. They said uh, uh, it's a proven fact that everybody learned, the children learn a lot better when they're coming to one, coming together one another, not because they're cheating, not because they're, 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 they're uh, looking at one another's paper, but because they're coming together and they're talking of those same subject matter. They're encouraging one another. But when it comes down to God's house, oh, wait a minute, huh? Y'all show y'all sprayed the building, y'all, I don't know, COVID's still alive. Huh? And we make up all kind of excuses. How come, let's, why don't we just learn something from the children? <laughs> if the children get so excited to go back, even though they come in and they may get COVID a little bit and go back, but that's all right. I'm going back to school. Yes, they're excited to get back. Why aren't we excited to get back to God's house? Why? Because we may not have the intimacy that we should have. Whew. Check your intimacy. Check your relationship with God. Check, check, check your communication with God. Check your meditation with God. Check your fasting and pushing your plate back. Check your time of, 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 of just you and God. When was the last time you stepped into your closet with God? Just you and God. That's an intimate relationship. And then when it, when it means, uh, look at that word. Look at that word. Break that word down. Into me you see. Into me you see. Keep on saying. Say it slow. Into me you see. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it. Into me you see. And that goes both ways. He already, he already know about you. He already, he, he's into you. He already see you. But then when you are intimate with God, you get to see who God is. And to me, you see, it goes both ways. God is allowing the, 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 the spiritual transfer to help us to see who we are and to see who he is. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we need these because life is so unpredictable. Life is so uncertain. No one predict, no one can predict life in itself only but God. Who would have imagined uh, December 2019, right before the New Year's resolution, who would have imagined that we will be facing, we had no plan for COVID. None. We didn't even know. It was on the horizon. No plan. We had all these other kind of New Year's resolutions. But guess what happened? COVID happened. And it turned us upside down. It threw us a curveball. The unexpected came. The unexpected happened. But what kept us? What keep you? What, what? The Bible says if you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. But it's got to have Intimacy, that's where it comes in. That's where the connection is. The mind, not the hands and the jumping, but the mind, communication. Boy, oh boy, I feel this thing tonight. Look at what David said. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. That, that almost sounds like a love letter, man. Listen, you, we, we, we talking to one, we trying to win them, boy, you... You, you, girl, you my girl. Boy, you, ooh, I love you. I, I'm going after you. <laughs> you. You know how that is. But look how David did it. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you. My mind, my body, and my soul is going. What did he tell us to do? Love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, all of thy mind. That soul and that body. Love him. That's when you know you have an intimate relationship with God. And I don't care how dry, how, how bad it is, how the storm is arising, raging. I don't care. The, he, David said, where there is no water, I still long for you. Second verse. Look at what he say. Look at that second verse. I have seen you in your sanctuary. And gazed upon the po your power and glory. We already know how powerful God is. We already bask in his glory. 
We've already, we've all, we, we got the word. We got enough to read about and, and what he's done, and we also know what he's doing for us right now. So, so we already know who God is. You can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him now. I've seen you in the sanctuary. I gaze upon your power and your glory. Third verse, please. Yes, your unfailing love is better than life itself. Isn't that something? Now, I praise you. I praise you. That's why it's so important to praise God. That's why, that's why, why do I praise him? Not because I'm going, not because it feels good, be, be, the heartache that I'm going through. I praise him because my relationship with him is, I'm coming out of this. I know he's going to bring me out. Come on, somebody. Woo, that's why I still praise him in spite of. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. Now, I praise you. Fourth verse, I will praise you. As long as I live. In other words, I'm totally committed to you, God. How many out there committed to God? Are you committed to God? Come on. Throw your hands and say, God, I'm committed to you. Now, then he said, as long as I live, I'm committed to you. I love you. As long I praise you, as long as I live, I lift, lifting up my hands to you in prayer. In other words, God, I know you're going to handle it. I know you can do anything. Listen, you're connected to me. I'm connected to you. You love me first before you. I even knew myself. You know everything about me, so I'm loving you. God loved us before we even loved ourselves. He loved us before you even knew yourself. He loved you before you, even before you was in your mother's womb, before you even, even conceived, God loved you. Woo, aren't you a part of the world? He loved you. Yes. For fifth verse, it says, you satisfied me more than the rich, richest feast. I will praise you with the songs of joy. Sixth verse says, I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. In other words, you know how it is. The individual, that person that's in your life, that's all you think about. You think about it. You go to bed thinking about it. You wake up. You dream about him. You wake up. That's the way we, have a, we should have a relationship with God. Think back. That first fellowship, that first time you received this presence, the first time you had an experience of the Holy Ghost, woo, you always wanted to be connected to God. I mean, I mean you... you Nobody had to make you pray. Church was open, you there. because And, and then even with prayer, you, not only did you pray on a special night, you prayed all the time. You talked to God. Why? You had him on your mind. Had him on your mind because of the intimacy that you had have with God. You medita meditated on him all through the night, all through the day. And seventh verse says, because you are my helper. He is a what? Helper. My God, your God is a present help. Not just in trouble, but he's present with you because you are my helper. I sing for your joy in the shadow of your wings. In other words, all I got to do is stay under the shadow. David said in the 91st division, he said that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the what? The shadow. Stay under his presence. Stay in his presence. That's where the communication comes. Go to the next verse, please. That's where the connect, connect, connection comes from. I cling to you. Your strong right hand help, holds me securely. In other words, God, part of that intimacy that I have, that I trust everything that you say you're going to do to me or for me. Your hand holds me. It keeps me secure. Do you know you're securing God? You know, uh, uh, uh. Man, man can't secure you like God can. Man, some people will let you go after a period of time. They get tired of you. You, you do, do something. You get on their nerve. They get tired of you. Oh, I, I'm, I don't know. They, they, they let you go. I'm not going to oh, forget all that I said. But God say, listen, I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm not going to let you go. Uh, David said, I'm going to hold on your hand. Your hand holds me securely. That's the part of the intimacy. But those plotting to destroy me will come to ruin. 
Listen, when you're having an intimate relationship with God, don't worry about your enemy. Don't you worry about those that's coming against you. The host may come up against you, but listen, God say, I'm, 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 I, don't worry about it. I'm, he's going to destroy him. You don't have to do it. He's going to do it. God will fight your battle. Look at what he say. They will go down into the depths of the earth. In other words, ain't but other place. It's either heaven or hell. And those that they don't change their way, change their mind, because of the intimacy that you have with God, messing with God's children, messing with God's loved one, you will get in some trouble. Amen. Look at the 10th verse. They will die by the sword and become food for the jackals. They, in other words, the animals are going to eat you up. But the king, but the king will rejoice in God. All who swear to tell the truth will praise him will, while liars will be silenced. In other words, there is a benefit in having an intimate relationship with God. It is very beneficial to you. It's a, very, it's a benefit to me when I know I have a relationship with God. What happens? What happens to that? I know God. I know God. I know God. I know he's going to take care of me. You got to get that in your mind. If you ain't connected to God and he knows you and you know him, and you're seeking after him, you're, you're talking to him, not just when you need him. But sometimes, listen, it's just good to say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for what I just appreciate you being who you are. My soul longeth for you. I just want to praise you. Song say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you for all that you've done for me. You woke me up. this. Now, man, we have a long list. We can just keep going on and on. And listen, the more we thank him, the more we have that communication with God, the more we, he draw. In fact, they, James say, draw now unto you. You draw unto him and he'll draw unto you. And there's enough God. We'll never run out of God. There's a, God is too big. I used this illustration before. It's kind of like God has no capacity problem. You know, he has no capacity problem. Lord, Lord, give me this thing some years, a few years ago, uh, some years ago, and it says, uh, the more intimate you have, intimacy you have, have with God, the more God will give you him, himself. In other words, God will not waste God. His mercy endureth forever. Look at this. I, I, I remember, thought about this. Uh, some years ago, I thought about, listen, if you bring a cup or a glass or a barrel or a tanker truck to the Atlantic Ocean, you fill up everything that you have, and, and, and you, you, you fill up everything that you can carry away and take it with you, do you know there's not all the water. You can take, you say, oh, that's taken too. That, that you can't even take all the water. You can't take. In other words, there's so much more of God than you can handle. <laughs> there's so much. He has so much love for us than we can handle. The, if you take all of this water, you take all, you just fill up, fill up everything you have. There's still more where that come from. Hallelujah. The, the, the ocean has so much more to offer. God has so much more to offer to us. The more we go after him, I will seek after him like David said. The more I pray, the more I meditate, the more I draw closer to him, that's bringing an intimate relationship with him. And you know, it's kind of like when you really love somebody, when you really love, you can't let nothing separate. Nothing will separate you. I'm telling you telling you, hey, hey, I don't care what, what, what it kept separating. Ain't nothing can separate me. Heights, death, love, I mean, death, anything won't separate me from the love of God. Why? Because I have, I have such a dying relationship, a intimacy. I go after God. I seek after him. Everything that I have, I love him with my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. So let's think about that. I, can, I have so many more scriptures, but I want you to think about this tonight. I want you to think about this. There's such a great benefit in having intimacy with God.
back to one of the things I said, one of the most important things that you can have to help, help with your intimacy with God is just to trust him. Trust him. Trust him when you can't trace him. Trust him when you don't even feel him. Trust him even when you don't see some of the results. You still trust him. Do like David. No, do like Job said. Listen, even, I, even though the skin worms eat up my flesh, even though I'm, I'm, I'm decayed, even though I'm back in the ground, and, and, and this, is, this is after death, I still trust him. I still love God. In other words, I have such a love for God, I will die trusting him. I will die loving him. I won't let nothing separate me. Guess what? He's already promised us in his word. I ain't going to, I'm not going to never leave you t neither. I'm not going to walk away from you. Isn't that something? How we walk away from God, how we make vows and how we do certain things and, and, and we, we make these promises and, and all of these resolutions and listen to all that. But soon as trouble come or soon as trials come, the enemy has a way of trying to dis detect us or pull us away from our relationship with God. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, make up in your mind. Don't let nothing pull me away from my intimacy with God. You have to look beyond what you see. You have to even go beyond how you feel. You got you to gotta ignore what you hear. Hear and don't hear. Because listen, my God said he's going to supply all of my needs. Yeah, I, I, it might be raining today, but sun is coming tomorrow. I might lose a house, but God's going to bless me with another one. I may, I may lose a job. God's going to bless me with me another one. God's going to open up another door. He's going to pour out your uh, 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 window. He's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You won't have enough room to receive. Why? Because I'm connected to him. Keep that in mind. Don't let the enemy pull away your love, your intimacy with God. And one thing I know about this intimacy with God, he know more about you than you know about yourself. You ain't got to worry about, you, ain't got, you can't keep no secret with God. You know, some people break up with one another and, and they, they just talk about one another. And, and, but it wasn't like that when you was together. And then they, they want to bad mouth an individual. They want to talk about them. They want to bring up all the dirt. Oh, but God is not like that. He said, listen, he said, I love you. I still love you. I still love you. So, so let's not have that superficial love for God. Let's have an undying love, a commitment to God like he is committed to you. In fact, even if you backslid, he's married to the backslider. So if you're not in that place where you should be with God, come on, come on, take advantage of this commitment he has for you. Come on, turn your life back over to him. Surrender to him. Give yourself to him. Give yourself to him. Turn your life around. I don't care what you've done, how bad the problem was, or what you're going through right now. God say, I love you with the undying love. And that love is better than any superficial love that anyone else can give you. That intimate relationship with God. How do I do it? I just close my eyes and start talking to him. Start praying to him. Asking him to help you. Point out, let him, go ahead and let him know. He already know your fault. He said, Cast, he said, he said confess your sin. Confess yourself to me. And believe me. And that's when you have that intimate relationship. Back in the day, I remember when we used to get the Holy Ghost, they say they, they, they wanted you to speak again, which was, I, I don't know where they got it from. And they sit down and it seemed like they had that spiritual evaluation to see if you really had the Holy Ghost. But, but, but. But the truth of the matter is, you already, you don't need nobody else to validate your Holy Ghost. You don't need nobody to validate your intimacy. The thing that kept me when I had fallen away from God, even though I had to sit in the back of the church, even though I had to be whatever, silenced or whatever, I knew I still loved God. I knew when I couldn't do what they wanted me to do, I would go home and pray and I could still feel his presence. Why? There was an intimate relationship that God says, I will never leave you. I still love you. 
And that's what I'm saying to you tonight, my brothers and my sisters. Come on, recommit your intimacy, your, your, your relationship with God. Even before you go to sleep tonight, call on God. Ask God to help you. What do I do? Sing praises unto him. Ask him to forgive you. Ask God and just trust him and believe him. Well, I hope you got something out of that lesson tonight. I can go on and on. And I, I don't want to just keep uh, 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 going over. I want to give you something to think about tonight, having that intimacy with God. Not with the pastor, but with God. Not with your friends, but with God. Intimate relationship with God. And when you have that relationship, it doesn't matter what nobody say. You already know I'm connected to the king of kings to the Lord of Lords, the one that created the universe, the one that create, created the heaven and earth, and the one that created you. Hallelujah. Created you in his image and in his likeness. You belong to God. I belong to God. We belong to God. So y'all, y'all, don't, don't lose your relationship with God. Get on back. Come on back. Let's, let's do like the little children that went back to school. Let's get excited about coming back in God's house. Come on back. It's something about coming together. It's something that if they can learn better coming together, we certainly can we, can, we can draw strength from one another coming together. Amen. Come on back to God's house. This Sunday we'll be in church. We'll be in service at 1230. Come on out. Come on out. Come where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. I want you to keep meditating on this word. See where your intimacy is with God, your relationship with God. And the more you draw closer to him, the more he'll draw closer to you. And there's enough God. He never run out of love. He never run out of compassion. His compassion, his mercy faileth not. Give you new mercies every morning. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm going to pray with you. Father, we thank you. For these few words that we had tonight, I pray that it, got, it, it, it pricked someone's heart to, to, to draw closer to you. It pricked the hearts to let them to know how much you love us, how much you care about us. And all, oh, it's not your fault that we follow. It's our fault. We got to draw closer to you, God. You're the same, God, yesterday, today, and forever. You're standing there with your hands out waiting on us to get ourselves together. God, tonight I ask you right now to bless those that are seeking you. Help them to go after you like never before. Help them to love you with their heart, their mind, their body, and soul. And then we can all say we'll let nothing separate us from your love. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friends, my brothers and sisters. Be encouraged. Go into, go into the faith of God. Know that he's with you in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you next time.